Welcome back everyone to another episode of How To Get Good. Now today we're going to be talking about weapon skills. Mostly passives, but we're going to go over weapon skills. These are very important and people don't necessarily understand how they work. So, if you've watched the previous two episodes, you'll understand obviously how to unlock things, that there are morphs, and how to level the skills up. Also, you'll have a brief understanding of how to plan which skills you should buy and which you shouldn't as far as passives are concerned and about understanding what they do now we're going to go over these because these are very very important and i know lots of people that don't necessarily get these right so two-hander for example this is very very simple to explain we have a two-handed weapon here and it hits stuff and that is considered as melee damage now when you do light attacks or heavy attacks with this particular passive, you'll actually do splash damage to multiple targets around you. So you'll hit more than one enemy if they're close enough. Let's put this out here. Let's try and move one of these dummies so we can do splash damage. My pond of disappointment. So move this guy over here to here. Very simple. They're both being hit. Same goes for heavy attack as well. Both being hit. So... That is in itself pretty self-explanatory, but just bear in mind, of course, the main target will take the most damage, and the splash damage will do 50% of the damage inflicted. So obviously, the more damage you do to the main target, the bigger your AoE damage. This one will grant you a bonus based on the weapon type. Now, this is very similar to the dual wield, which we'll get to later, but your sword will actually increase flat damage, everything that you do, by 6%. An axe will grant you a 16% chance to apply a bleed, a damage over time effect, to the target. And a mace will ignore 20% of the target's resistances. This is why this one is particularly favoured in PvP, actually, because then it strips the enemy of their resistances, so you hit them harder. It's not a debuff as such, it's just an active ignoring of a certain percentage of their resistances, so it's quite nice. So you can go flat damage if you want, you can go for a bleed if you really want to, I know that works on a lot of very nice AoE builds as well. Or you can just go flat, strip resistances and hit really, really hard. The choice is yours in that respect, but that is the difference in all the different types of two-handers. There's nothing major as far as all the skills are concerned. Now, this is something that you need to pay attention to, of course. Your axe grants you a bleed for melee attacks. So if you do light attacks, heavy attacks, or weapon skills from this skill line, you will actually have a chance to fire that. So if you are unsure about how to actually make that work, that's how you do it. The others are passive and they just sit there. This reduces the stamina cost of your abilities by 15% if they are two-hander abilities only while you have a two-hander equipped. So that's really, really important. Obviously, this helps towards your sustain, but you must have the two-hander obviously on, otherwise you can't use the skills. When you deal damage with a fully charged heavy attack, your next direct damage attack used within seven seconds deals 10% more damage. So this is any attack. You must have a two-hander equipped, but any attack that you have that is direct damage will do more damage so that could be a weapon skill or it could be a class skill it could be anything as long as it follows that rule it must be direct attack direct damage attack in fact so i mean even if it was a light attack so if you look down on my buff timage you can see that symbol next to the sword on the left there now it's gone so i can wind up a heavy attack to give me a 10 percent increase to my next direct skill which is also that as well and here Venom Claw does have a direct hit when it first starts, so that can consume it. So just bear in mind, anything that has a direct effect. So just make sure that you plan which ability you're going to use. Don't just heavy attack and spam anything, because you might consume it on the wrong ability. Now, this increases your stamina recovery by 30% for 10 whole seconds after killing a target. So if you are wailing in, being a proper berserker and killing stuff everything that you kill will restart this timer and give you massive recovery so do pay attention to these passives yes of course if you're using this weapon skill you want all of them but understand what they do because things like this follow up if you don't know how that works and you've just bought the passive you're never going to be able to plan that 10 percent damage increase to one of your special attacks for example if you want to execute someone right now and they're really really low health but you want to make sure they die heavy attack on first you'll hit them harder it's very important to know what they do not just buy them now, one-handed shield, this is essential. Tanks, I hope you're listening. 
This first ability is a taunt. That's how you keep the aggro. Just saying. We can go over that another time. But make sure this is what you apply to the target to keep your group safe. Anyway, passives. This will reduce the stamina cost of your one-handed shield abilities. That goes without saying. Makes sense that you want to get the cost down so that you can use them more often. Or have more resources for other things. This reduces the cost of blocking also. As a sword and board user, you're supposed to be quite tanky. That is generally what tanks use, although there are other weapons. You want to get your block cost reduction down, obviously, because otherwise you're going to rinse your stamina. Block costs stamina when you get hit. So this is helpful. This increases the weapon damage of this skill line. So anything that you are using here will be improved damage-wise, if you need that. But at the same time, this is a double dip passive. This also... Um, increases the amount of damage you can block so these are both mitigating effects while blocking very very handy indeed but just bear in mind you must have sword and board equipped don't be on a different bar with a different weapon because these passives won't count this improves your standard bash attack so you do have a bash attack which interrupts things everybody in the game can do that but of course for sword and board or one handed shield yours is increased in terms of damage output and it will actually cost less. So this is a utility for a sword and board type, but also it can be quite powerful if you are spec towards damage. This increases the amount of damage you can block from projectiles. So if you're getting hit by arrows or magic shots of fire or ice or whatever, this will reduce it. And this will increase your movement speed while blocking. Now, it may not be common knowledge, but while blocking, you are slower. As you can see, normal speed, blocking, you're slower. With a sword and board active so you must have them on your buy you must be holding them your movement speed is faster during this which is quite nice for tanks because of course you may have to position the boss occasionally while holding block and it helps you get from one place to another quickly again notice every single one of these has a very specific condition you must have a one hand and shield equipped when i showed you the bash earlier that was a basic attack that everybody has but i will not get this passive bonus because i do not hold a sword and board right now bear that in mind also, these block passives. I see a lot of people switching bars to a bow or a destruction staff and dying while blocking. You don't have this mitigation unless you are on this bar. Dual wield, very simple. Kind of like the, the two-hander, to be fair. Melee damage, but with some passives that benefit you overall. Now, just for doing damage, pretty much. This one increases the damage of dual wield abilities by 20% against enemies with under 25% health while dual wielding. So you must be on this bar, don't forget. You must be on the two one-hand weapon bar. So you have like a dagger and an axe or whatever. There's no right or wrong. They're all different, but you can have two weapons, one in each hand. Now, just bear in mind, these are very specific instructions here. This will increase your dual wield ability strength by 20% against low health enemies. All of these count... But so does your light and your heavy attack. Your light and your heavy attack from your dual wield is a dual wield ability. And this does benefit. So the lower their health, the better. When you start looking at your skills and you have stuff like this, which is an execute. Obviously, the lower the health, the stronger it gets. This stacks on top of it. So consider that these abilities all do work together. Now, we're not going to get into the calculations of how much damage output that will actually do. But they do stack regardless. It's not as simple as just adding them together. Now, this will increase the weapon damage of your offhand weapon. Now, in dual wield, when you have two weapons, your main hand is the one with the strongest weapon damage. Even if the two weapons are exactly the same, your offhand weapon will hit for less. So this does close the gap a little bit. This is also important for traits because Nern Honed, by the way, does increase the weapon damage of your weapon. No matter what hand it's in, it does do that. But because your main hand is stronger, it makes sense to put Nernhund in the main hand, not the off, because you'll benefit more from it. That's sidelining into traits. We won't necessarily go too far into that today, but just bear in mind that is very relevant. This reduces the stamina cost of dual wield abilities. You would be stupid not to get this. It reduces the cost of all these skills, so they're cheaper. This will give you a 15% damage bonus when attacking stunned, immobilized, disorient, or silenced enemy. So anyone that is affected by CC at all. We did go over some of the CC in a previous video, talking about stuns and immobilizations and such. Didn't go over silence, but we're going to do that later. Any negative crowd control towards the enemy will actually increase your dual wheel attacks. And again, remember, light and heavies do count. 
And this one is very important, very similar to that of the two-hander. But because we've got dual wield, these abilities are somewhat halved. So, if you have an axe, instead of a 16% chance to bleed, you have an 8% per weapon. If you have maces, instead of a 20% bonus to um, ignoring their resistances, basically, you have 10% per weapon. And instead of 6% damage for having a sword, you get 3% per weapon. Now, there is one extra, and that is a dagger. Now, this will increase your weapon crit rating by... Let's show you, because it's a lot, lot easier. Put a dagger on. There we go. By 1095. So, yes, that obviously doubles if you have two of them. Same with the sword. You can get the 6% bonus, just like a two-hander, but you need two swords to do it. So, you can mix and match these, or double them up in any way you like. But be, be aware, again, these bonuses are only applicable while you're on the dual wield bar. Yes, your bleed can fire on the dual wield and you can swap bars and it'll still stay, but you have to activate it on that bar. It's very important to note that. If you swap bars after having two daggers and you go over to, say, an ice staff, which is weird, but you never know, um, you lose your crit bonus on that bar. It's only while you're holding these particular weapons. Bow is very straightforward. For holding a bow, obviously, you get these passives. This will give you a damage bonus of up to 12% against enemies at longer range. I don't need to explain this any clearer. But there's lots of people that basically sit on a dummy with a bow bow build using melee based abilities. And not even taking advantage of this. Stop cheesing the dummy. If you're going to be a ranged build, benefit from your ranged passives. This is very simple. Now, if we hit this target here. 5.1k crit. Okay, we'll make sure our passive has run off. Now we'll go backwards. Hopefully we crit again. 5.3. Now that was a small increase, but if you scatter that across all your different bow abilities and add it up over time, that makes a substantial difference. Now, we'll try with Lethal Arrow from this range. So close. 8.9. We'll try again without getting a crit, hopefully. From long range. Come on, don't crit this time. <laughs> There you go, 9.5. So this is a, this is a substantial increase. But I don't see enough people doing that. Now, some of these passives do stack up. So this is where it's very important. The longer range you are, the more damage you will do with your light attacks, your heavy attacks, or your bow skills. Now, this will increase your crit rating while on the bow bar. So it makes sense to get that. This will reduce the cost of the ability so you can use them more often. Or, so it don't cost so much. And this one is very important. Every single light attack or heavy attack that you do within 5 seconds of a previous one will increase your damage with your bow abilities while on the bow bar by 5%, stacking 5 times, so 25% increase. So, if you're at range, you have a 12% increase for longer range. If you keep up your light attacks and heavy attacks, you also increase by 25%. No, it's not straightforward 12% plus 25 calculations are for another day but it does benefit on top this is very very important because if you look carefully my light attack will give me a buff at the bottom of the bar and you'll notice the first one will be quite quite good 3.5 uh, sorry 5.3 watch the buff at the bottom every light attack adds an extra number in there up to five and as long as i do a light attack or heavy attack at least once every five seconds that will stay with me forever and my light attacks are now hitting for 6.2 consistently as long as I crit so that's gone up by a lot now if we do lethal arrow which was a 15k crit last time but we can still get one can't get a crit now 17.6 it's a 2k increase on that hit and a 1k increase on each light attack stacking those two bonuses obviously works and obviously makes sense but I don't see enough people utilizing them most people sit there with melee skills and beast traps and all the rest of it to try and get as much damage as they can single target up in the face of the enemy. And then when they get into content, they're not even using those skills. If you're going to be a bow bow build and you want to benefit from range, go range. Finally, of course, using a bow, you should be ranged and agile. And if you dodge roll, you get a run speed bonus for a short period of time. So this is actually very, very helpful for you to evade. You may be away from the healers at range. So you have to rely on your own survivability and agility to, to not get nuked in mechanics. 
Sometimes you have to come in, it can't be helped. But if you are out of the way and you are being focused, you can dodge roll. Um, the major expedition bonus lasts four seconds, but also remember, if you dodge roll too close to a previous dodge roll, four seconds in fact, your next one will be more expensive. So be careful. Destruction stuff is very important and people need to understand these passives. Now I'm going to go over to another character because I've got those maxed out on a different one and I'm going to explain how important these are. Now we're going to do this in reverse order because let's just say it's a little easier to manage because there is a very important one in the destruction stuff skill line that I need to explain to you in detail because I've seen it mess up so many times and it is down to one reason alone, and that is people not reading their passes, which is something I've tried to kind of over explain to emphasize the fact that it's important. But anyway, resto staff. When you heavy attack something, you will gain 25% healing done for three seconds. This can't be any simpler. Now, there is obviously a second part to this. When you do a fully charged heavy attack, you will actually heal yourself or an ally for 30 percent of the damage inflicted once the heavy attack is over now basically heavy attack the target damage done will heal you once it's finished that could heal somebody else instead that can be quite substantial in some situations depending on your build but it's very very important now essentially above all what we need to pay attention to here is the fact that this will give you major mending ignore that big effect on the ground that's amazing we'll come back to that another time but Look at my buffs at the bottom there. You'll see a yellow kind of glow come up in a tiny square. That one there. The greeny, yellowy effect. That is Major Mending. When that is on, all of your healing done is increased by 25%. Couldn't even catch it quick enough. Where is it? There we go. You're looking for this one. So, as a healer, or even if you're not a healer, if you want to take full advantage of your heals and really make them strong... You need to be heavy attacking. Now, let's not say that you need to heavy attack all the time, of course. But if you do heavy attack, you'll benefit from it. And there are some sets in the game as well that actually stack alongside this passive and or increase them. And both. They do stack alongside of each other as well. So, for example, there is a Vanus set that will increase the duration of this passive. Increasing it to 6 seconds from 3. Then you have your Vults, which will increase this from 6 seconds to over eight so there are ways to benefit from this in stupid stupid ways but above all pay attention to what you get from your heavy attack you get a heal for you or somebody else and you increase all of your heals including that one that you get from the end of the heavy now this would increase your healing by 15 percent on allies under 30 percent health so the lower their health the bigger your heals for them as long as you are using a resto staff if you're using a sword and board, dual wield, destro, it doesn't matter whatever weapon you're using. If you use any other weapon on your bar while throwing out a class heal, for example, you don't get this passive. If you heavy attack of any other weapon, you don't get this passive. It must be on your resto staff bar. This one is specific to the resto heavy. This one is specific to holding it. So, for argument's sake, we do a breath of life on a destro bar. We don't get this passive. We do a breath of life on this bar. We do get it. This increases your fully charged heavy attacks restore of Magicka by 30%. So, don't heavy attack with your Destro or Sword and Board or whatever if you're trying to get stuff back. Heavy attack with your Resto stuff, you'll get 30% extra back. Now, every heavy attack will give you resources back, but this is the only one that will actually have an increase to the flat value that you get. The return from a heavy attack on a Resto is not only massive for your sustain, but also your healing done. It's huge. This restores magicka when you block a spell. You must be holding a resto star for this. This is very simple and self-explanatory. Block damage, get resources back, then you can hit stuff or heal stuff, whichever. And finally, this increases healing with resto staff spells. So, all of these abilities here are stronger. You can only fire them on the resto staff anyway, but this passive will increase them all at base. This will increase them when the enemy's health is, when the target's health is low, the allies even. And this, of course, will increase it furthermore if you heavy. So make sure you heavy attack with a resto. Don't do it too often, of course, because otherwise you won't be healing anything because you'll just be heavy, 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 heavy. You've got to throw in some heals. But while your hots are running, don't just do nothing. If you're putting down, say, illustrious healing um, along with rapid regen and maybe breath and protection or whichever morph you've got, 
and maybe some ticks of heals are going over and you don't feel like you should really be casting anything right now, do a heavy attack. All of your heals down on the ground now are going to be improved by Major Mendon and you're just going to keep your resources up. It helps. Pay attention to these. They're very important, especially stuff like this. Now, this is the most important one because it has so many errors with it. Now, destruction stuff, of course, does damage. But there are three types of destruction stuff. There is ice, fire, and lightning. This first passive is the most important thing you will ever hear for Destro Staves. Your fully charged flame attacks with a fire staff will do a fireball, but they will do 12% additional damage. Your fully charged shock or lightning heavy attacks will do splash damage, equivalent to 100% of the damage done to surrounding enemies. So it's an air of effect attack. So basically, we will put on a fire staff to demonstrate this, if we have one. Probably not. Ice, fire. Yes, we do. Right. This is a heavy attack with a flame staff. That does 12% more damage than any other staff with that type of heavy attack. However, as we saw, lightning does splash damage. So, the amount of damage your target receives is what you'll do in splash damage as well. Now, basically, if I hit him, the other target will get splash damage. Look above his head. Constantly ticking damage. Now, how that is scaled is basically your flat damage that you do, not including the crit, will translate over to this guy. But consider that your main target has normally got more debuffs and buffs and such on it. So you can go through um, penetration values or resist values and all that kind of stuff. And this guy might not have so many debuffs. So he won't get hit quite as hard. But it translates from 100% of the base depending on buffs and debuffs at the time. Now, that also means that if he's off balance and I hit him really, really hard, he gets hit harder. But then if he's off balance and I have bonuses in my champion points, he gets hit even harder than that. So it's a balance game, but essentially in an AoE situation, the shock staff is completely different to flame. Flame is a direct, a direct damage increase to a heavy attack. This is everything in the room gets nuked at the same time. So basically, very simply put, this does splash damage, so air of effect, and the other is direct damage, so slightly higher on the direct heavy. However, they are very different in the way that they are applied. Um damage wise because one is a straight wind up and slap and the other is tick damage every tick you can see it tick 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 and then a pop at the end it's a very different type of heavy now here's the most important one and this is the one that messes everybody up when they first start the game and even later on i've seen some a10s not know how to do this now an ice staff read your passives before you buy them you're fully charged Frost Staff Heavy Attack taunts the enemy to attack you. That damage shield obviously can be altered with stats, but that's not the important part. However, that's all people see. All people see is fully charged Frost Staff Heavy Attack, blah, 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 gives me a damage shield. No. Taunts the enemy to attack you. The Frost Staff is a defensive staff. This here. Flame, more direct damage to single target heavy attacks, which is exactly what they're built for. This one, more damage to area of effect from your heavy attack, and it ticks. This taunts. So I'll heavy attack him. Look at his buff timers. You will see a black square with a shield in it. Yay, I got damage shield. But look, he's taunted. Now, if I do what I've seen people doing and run away, he's going to chase me. I have aggro. I am now actively a tank so if you are a dps and you're using a flame staff or a lightning staff this passive is amazing if you are a dps and you are using an ice staff do not buy this passive don't buy it because you're going to taunt stuff if you're a tank however get it because you're going to need it it's a free taunt you heavy attack you get resources back from heavy attacks win-win I've seen so many DPS players in dungeons and trials running around the room, which, by the way, does not help. Makes it really difficult for the tank to gain aggro. Running around the room saying, get it off me, get it off me, while they have this effect on the target. This is you taking aggro off the tank and saying, hit me instead. Stop it. Now, the other passive is very important, of course. Penetrated magic. Light armor, passives, and... 
Destro passives and all the rest of them makes it very, very easy to go through resistances. This particular bonus goes through 10% of the enemy's spell resistances. It actually ignores it flat off the bat. Now, this is for your skills in your destruction staff skill line and your light and your heavy attack because they count. So pay attention to that. This increases your chance to apply the burning concussion and chill status effects by 100%. So you have a base amount which you can actually have a chance to apply these effects. But this increases it. Now this is also very important. Read the description. With a destruction staff equip. So while we're on this bar, any damage that we do, burning, concussion or chill can happen from if we're doing fire, lightning or ice. Each one is unique to its own damage type. But if you take your destruction staff off, you will not gain this extra chance to do so. Now, why is this important? This is why. Skills, we'll make sure we've got elemental blockade on. Elemental blockade has a bonus that makes enemies go off balance if they are concussed. Okay, that is an important thing to note. We're not going to go too much into off balance and all that good stuff today, but I am going to show you this demonstration. So, if I have off balance on him that's pretty much done that was concussion off balance happened great now if i change my weapon type on my front bar because i just swapped bars then and everything was fine if i swap bars to my resto staff or even a sword and board or whatever we'll go resto because a lot of healers like to do this i'm just going to demonstrate to you the difference i'm now on my resto bar Lightning's going off. Concussion is not happening. Burning status effect. Not happening. Oh, finally. See how long that took? Last time I hit it straight away. This is very simple. This passive only applies to the increased chance if you're holding a Destro stuff. You can still apply it on any other weapon as long as those skills are running. But while holding a staff you have a heightened chance to do so. So if you are double Destro on a DPS and you're using Lightning, for example, and you want to get Concussion, you're going to make it a lot, lot easier on yourself to do so rather than using two completely different weapons. That is also important for tanks, which I've seen using a Lightning Staff on the back bar while using a Sword and Ball on the front. Just remember, while you're on your back bar, you don't get these passives. And while you're on the front bar, you don't get these. So if you are that type of player and you are utilizing these types of passives, make sure you understand which bar you should be on and when to be able to benefit from them. Also, one more thing. If you're using Wall of Elements with Concussion and you're expecting it to fire, but you've got a Resto on the front and you think, well, that's fine. I'll just stay on my back bar on my Destro stuff and throw out class heals. Yes, you will increase your status effect chance. But what happens here? You lose... The benefit of having stronger heals for low health targets. Pay attention to your passives. There's not a negative that you play in that manner. But it is a negative if you don't understand why things are going wrong when it's down to you. So pay very close attention to the description of the skills and learn their application. Now, ancient knowledge. This is very straightforward. A flame staff will increase your damage done with single target abilities. So anything that hits the target, and it's a single target ability just for that target only. That's very, very specific. However, Lightning Staff will increase the damage done with area of effect abilities. So anything that is not direct single target, anything that is area of effect full stop. That could be damage over time, it could be direct damage, but it, as long as it does area of effect damage, all of that is increased. Here's an example. This um, ability here. That is single target. That will be increased by your flame staff. This is area of effect. That will be increased by your lightning staff. This is area of effect, and so is this. Lightning staff will make them stronger, flame staff won't. This, however, single target. But it does have area of effect application. So the area of effect damage over time is actually increased. So, you need to know your skills to know which staff is going to be more beneficial for you for your build. Very, very important to note those passives. And finally, in this particular passive itself, this is very important. 
while you have a frost staff equipped, you reduce the cost of blocking by 36% and increase the amount of damage you can block by 20%. This is the same as the sword and board passives, the first two in fact, as far as your block mitigation is concerned. And this is also another concern for tanks. Now, we will put on the ice staff. And what we'll do is we'll block. You won't really see much of a demonstration here, but we'll just put it on anyway so it's here. If you block with an ice staff, you do not stop your stamina recovery anymore. While blocking, your stamina recovery is stopped, yes. But with an ice staff, your magic recovery is stopped. So let's do some magic. Do you know why? Because now you are tanking with a defensive staff. Your resource for blocking is your magic bar. Now, if you have an ice staff and you're blocking with this bar, you will get block passives. If you're using a sword and board on the front and a lightning staff on the back and you try and block with your lightning staff, what are you missing? you got AoE damage right now. You don't have block passives. This is why a lot of tanks that try to be utility, if you want to do that, that's fine, but pay attention. This is why a lot of those tanks die. They're blocking on the bar that doesn't have block passives. If you're using an ice staff, you can block and you're fine. If you're not using an ice staff, you want to make sure you're on a bar that you can block with, with block passives as a tank, or if you're a DPS, be careful what you're up against because you don't have that passive. Now, finally, when you kill an enemy with a destruction staff ability, you restore 3600 Magicka. So it's a Destro ulti, the abilities, or even a light or a heavy attack, you will actually get magic back. So sometimes it might not benefit you to put down another skill for loads and loads of cost. It might just benefit you to just finish off a heavy. Because you'll get resources back from the heavy itself, plus for getting the kill if you kill it. Really important stuff. Now, we're going to go briefly over the light, medium, heavy passives, because these are, of course, very important. Now, this is for reduction to effectiveness of snares per piece worn. Very important there. Make sure, of course, if you don't want to be stuck in the mud, you get these passives. And the more light armor pieces you wear, the better. And, of course, it reduces the cost of sprint. We can't sprint that much as a magic build, so this does actually help us quite a bit. This increases your mag recovery per piece worn and reduces the cost of skills per piece worn. So if you want higher sustain for your magic or abilities, you go with more pieces of light. If you want lesser, you go with less. Resistance, same rules apply. The more pieces, the better. This requires five pieces. You don't get that spell crit bonus unless you have five pieces or more worn. So if you do break your armor or you're only wearing four pieces, you will not benefit from this at all. So make sure you pay attention to that. And the rules apply to this skill too. Regardless of which morph you have, you have to have five pieces equipped. This white text at the top there saying your condition is very, very important. You must read this. It's not the fact that you even know what these do sometimes. It's knowing the condition. This also needs five pieces or more, and this will give you spell penetration. You don't get that bonus without it. Medium is very much the same, but for the other side of the coin, obviously, this is more for stamina and weapon damage and weapon crit. The higher the crit is obviously for the amount of medium pieces you wear. Your stam recovery and stam reduction to cost, exactly the same as the light armor, but in the medium side of it. This reduces your sneak cost per piece worn. Now, 7% is quite a substantial amount, but if you wear a full medium build, that can go up by a lot. So does your detection um, area while sneaking as well. So these are all beneficial per piece worn. So you can even have one piece bonus from this and benefit from it, like we're doing right now. This requires five pieces and goes up to 15. That's massive, but it's weapon damage only, not spell damage. Bear that in mind. And this, of course, is a movement speed bonus and dodge roll reduction. Although this looks very, very low on paper, you can benefit from this, and this will help you sustain a lot. Heavy armor, of course. Resistances for both sides if you have pieces worn. A maximum of seven. You'll get a benefit no matter how many pieces you're wearing, but the more the better. This will increase your health recovery and give you resources back for being hit. So while you're in the fight, once every four seconds for taking damage, you get resources back. 108 at base. Doesn't sound a lot, purple. But it does actually add up quite a bit, especially with race passives and such like that. But of course, the more pieces, the better. Health bonus up to 14% if you have 7 pieces, 2% per piece. This will increase your return for magic and stamina. And this goes up to 25% for using 5 pieces of heavy. So if you are a tank and you're using this passive, you get 25% increase from your heavy attack. If you happen to be using a resto for some reason on that tank, 
you can consider your 30% increase from your resto passives as well. So they stack up. And then you've got healing received. Your healing done to low health targets from your resto skill line, if you're wearing loads of heavy armor pieces, actually does consider your healing received as well if you're the target being healed. So you get a massive heal from yourself. Stacking these passives really does count in certain situations, but you've got to know what each one of them does. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing or long. That was... We did go through them all, but we're not going to explain every situation. I just want you to be aware that although the passives are there just to buy and do their business, you can play smart in combat and utilize them for their strengths rather than just them doing their job because they do. Sometimes you might get lucky and get really big heals or really big uh, damage reductions or really hard hits and you have no idea why. Read your passives, then you'll know. And some passives you don't want to buy. So, first of all, thank you all very, very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support. If you are not subscribing on YouTube, please do hit that button. It's free. The button that isn't free is join, by the way. If you press join, you'll see some membership options there. Go nuts. If you don't want it, don't get it. But if you do, there's some choices for you there. Also, if you want to help support outside the channel, there are some links in the description for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and of course the website, zynodgaming.com, where all the written guides are. Once again, thank you all very, very much for watching. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can see when I'm uploading new videos, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.